December 1924. Adolf Hitler was released from jail and returned to Munich. His Nazi party was in chaos and the Bavarian government had banned him from playing his trump card, public speaking. For an orator and a demagogue like Hitler, this is a huge handicap. Hitler decided to switch tactics. He no longer sought revolution, but change from within Germany's Weimar government. The fiasco of the Beer Hall Putsch has convinced Hitler that revolution in the old style is impossible. He comes out of prison determined to act legally. His first priority was to shed his gangster image. The challenge of rebranding Adolf Hitler fell to a former paparazzi photographer, Heinrich Hoffmann, an ally who greeted Hitler as he emerged from Landsberg prison. Together, Hoffmann and Hitler try out lots of different poses, lots of different costumes, if you like. One of them is Lederhosen. And when they see the contact sheet of all the images of Hitler and Lederhosen, he sort of scrubs them all out, puts red crosses over it, and just thinks he looks silly. Hitler will never wear Lederhosen in public again. And it's at this point when Hitler starts thinking of mutating into becoming more of a statesman-like figure. Those who know him are shocked by the change. Adolf Legalité, some of his friends mockingly call him. Legal Adolf. Hoffman took over two million photos to perfect Hitler's idealized image of himself. Hitler wanted the many photos he didn't like destroyed, but Hoffman kept them, and they survive to this day. September 1931. Adolf Hitler's most important relationship was with a woman who lived in his Munich apartment and routinely appeared with him in public. His 23-year-old niece, Gailey Raubal. Hitler used Gailey to promote his image as a wholesome family man. But speculation mounted over the exact nature of their relationship. His niece, Gailey, is described as this uh, wonderful, uh, beautiful girl, and he's obviously attracted to, to her. Um, he has her around all the time. Whether he was attracted to her sexually, we don't know. Lovers or not, Hitler was the dominant figure in Gailey's life. Hitler wants to control her life. He should be the only man in her life. And um, when he finds out that she has an affair with his chauffeur Maurice, he is devastated and upset. He is terribly jealous. There's this chilling sentence that Gelli Raubel says to her friends. My uncle is a monster. Nobody understands what he demands of me. Rumors began swirling in the press that Hitler was keeping Gelli a virtual prisoner in his apartment. She is by now in love with a um, young man in, in Vienna. So she wants to go to Vienna, he won't let her. On the 18th of September, neighbors overheard a fight between Hitler and his niece. Later that day, Hitler left Munich and headed for Nuremberg. The next day, she is found dead. It was his revolver. Did he shoot her? There are lots of witnesses who said he wasn't there that night. So um, we don't know whether um, he shot her, she shot herself, or a third party shot her. That is the great mystery to this day. We know that in his relationship with Ava Brown, as in so many other areas of his life, Hitler resorted to drugs. He was injected with testosterone, cocaine eye drops, everything. As his health worsened, Hitler's leg was shaking uncontrollably. His personal physician, Dr. Theodore Morell, noted in his diary it was probably stress-related. 
the treatment was an injection believed to contain methamphetamine. He was on a cocktail of something like 74 drugs. And so this clearly clouds the mind. It'll keep you up, it'll keep you going, but it really uh, robs you of a great deal of perspective. He's an addicted leader. So the long lie-in, the late breakfast, the medical treatments, the injections, the pills, before lunch. And then he will walk down to the tea house, eat cake, and he gets driven back uphill because he never likes to physically exert himself. Supper, another vegetarian meal, and then it's a very strong expectation. Everyone gathers around the fire and he starts talking. And he talks and talks and talks about art, about race, music, vegetarianism, about history, talking to people. the difference between... They'll have to sit there and listen to it. And we have many memoir accounts where people say, my God, I was ready to shoot myself. I thought he would never stop.